I'm super excited today because I'm going to get to share with you one of my favorite projects I've made thus far. It's, I like to call it an adventure chest. Basically, it's a fancy box to store all your fancy things. It's inspired by campaign furniture and shop storage, uh, and one of my favorite parts about it is the joinery. Uh, we're going to be cutting some dovetails and some mortise and tenons, making some frame and panel doors, and then making a bunch of smaller drawers and boxes to put inside the adventure chest to hold all of our valuables. Uh, and one of the really exciting parts about this project is that we're going to be using the Shaper Origin and the Shaper Workstation to cut almost all of the joinery. Now, Shaper is a sponsor of this video. Thank you, Shaper. Uh, but I've been using their uh, Origin and the Workstation for about a year now, and uh, they're, they're an incredible piece of technology. Um, it's really fun seeing a company push what a router can do uh, with a little bit of uh, electronics inside of it. Um, and I'm excited to share that with you today. The dovetails are generated from a file that Shaper has provided to me and to you to generate our dovetails that we're going to be cutting with the Origin and Workstation. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the bits we're going to be using for cutting our dovetails. This is a quarter inch end mill. This is one of the bits that comes with your Shaper Origin. And then I purchased two additional dovetail bits. Uh, this one in the middle, uh, you can see it has a smaller depth of cut than the one on the end. And so this is about a half inch depth of cut. This is a little bit more than three quarters of an inch depth of cut. So one of the important things to keep in mind is the thickness of the material you're going to be using. We're using three quarter inch material for the exterior of our case. So I wanna make sure my dovetail bit um, can cut that full three quarters of an inch depth in one pass. So we're not gonna be using this tinier dovetail bit, um, but we're just gonna be using these two router bits to cut our joinery. Now, let's head to the origin. So the origin knows where it is based on these uh, domino looking characters on this board here. Uh, and they also make a, what's called a shaper tape. So you can make your own board, which we'll get to in a little bit. Um, but the first thing you wanna do with your origin is set up your workspace. We're gonna be using the workstation. Uh, and so to set up your workspace, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you're going to need to scan your, the area where you're going to be working. So we're going to create a new scan. And then on the screen, we've got an orange and a green button, which correspond to the buttons on each handle. And so we're going to start our scan. And as you can see, once a domino has been scanned, they turn blue. So you wanna make sure you get all of them. And we're just Scanning the whole thing, like so. And then finish. That's going to create our workspace. And we're actually going to need two different workspaces, one for our pins and one for our tails. Uh, so I'm going to go into my workspaces and I'll name, rename this from the default of workspace. I'm actually going to call it pins two because I have another pins workspace already. And then I'm going to duplicate this workspace. And we're gonna call the other one tails2. Okay, so we have our workspaces set up. Now let's talk a little bit about the workstation. Uh, so the workstation uh, again, has your uh, reference surface on the top. And then on the back here, it has uh, some grooves and some clamps and other uh, jigs for vertical work holding, which is uh, what we're going to be doing when we cut our pins and our tails. Um, a couple of key features, uh, we've got two registration stops on the left side. They also have some on the right side, but we won't need them because we'll always be referencing from the left here these simple clamps that'll hold our workpiece in place. Uh, and then up top we have our support bar, which also helps us reference the top edge of our workpiece, gives us a positive stop there. And then uh, we have a waist strip, which is just a piece of MDF because you don't wanna be cutting into your workstation. And so these are disposable, replaceable. So, uh, the next thing we're gonna do is clamp our tailboard in place. So 
So to do that, I've got our positive stop on the top. I've got my tailboard here. This is uh, already cut to size, so it's 11 inches wide, 25 inches tall. We've got two of them because we've got two sides of our case. And we're going to snug it up against the registration pins. So we've got our piece clamped in the workstation. Can take that off. I usually just like to run my finger along the top edge here to make sure those surfaces are flush. And then there are some cams here that, um, that you snug your waist strip up against your workpiece. You don't want to tighten them too much where you're pushing your piece out of whack. You just want to snug them up there. That should be good. Okay. So the next step uh, in setting up your workspace is creating a grid. And to do that, we're actually going to be using the router uh, to register the edges of our board. And uh, we're going to actually be using uh, the V-carve bit that comes with your Shaper Origin, um, but we're inserting it into the collet upside down. Uh, so it's just a nice smooth pin. So we're going to create our grid uh, by basically registering the center of the router where that pin is against the edges of our board. So we were gonna have two points in the, on the face and one on the side. Uh, so we're going to create a new grid. So we'll go to new. Uh, we're gonna create a half inch grid. First thing we need to do is to set our depth of our probe. So we'll lower that until we can make contact with the edge of our board. Looks good. Set our depth. And then we have three points. Our first one, our second one, then our third one, right on the edge here. Now with our grid created, we can import our design. So we're gonna import our tails file. And then we're going to place it. I'm gonna use this center left anchor point and so right there, it's on the origin of our grid, which is the corner of our workpiece. And we actually want to go a half inch beyond that. Uh, that was that half inch offset we saw in Fusion 360. And we're going to place it. So now uh, we have our workspace set up. Next, we need to swap out our bit for our dovetail bit. And then we can actually do some cutting. One of the important things we want to do is do a Z-touch. And so the Z-touch uh, brings the bit down very slowly to the top of your workpiece, basically tells the bit where the bottom of the bit is. We're going to do a pocketing pass first to hog out most of the waste, and then we're going to come back and do a second pass to cut the dovetails to their final size. Final thing to keep in mind is we want to make sure we set the diameter of our bit to the correct diameter. We're referencing the bottom of the bit. It's a half inch in diameter. Uh, and then we're also going to use an offset in the pocket. And so an offset means we're not cutting the full, uh, the, the full width of the pocket. Now we are cutting the whole depth of these dovetails in one pass, which might seem like a lot for uh, a router bit. And, and it is, um, but the origin is more than capable of doing this. Um, you wanna make sure you pay attention and make sure you've got a nice sharp, clean router bit. Um, and the other thing that happens is when the origin senses an error, uh, so maybe you've gone outside of your lines or you're pushing too hard, it'll retract the bit. Because of the shape of the dovetail bit, that can ruin the look of your tails. Uh, so when you're cutting your tails, it's really slow and steady is important and pay attention to sort of the manual feedback you're getting from the router as well. So there you can see our first uh, pocketing pass. And then we will go ahead and do another pass to clean that up. So um, this uh, next pass we're going to do uh, is an inside pass. And you can see how on screen it changes. And so we're going to follow this line uh, and we're going to go down to a zero offset. And that will create our final shape. Same bit, same plunge depth, all that jazz. All right.
right. There we have it, our first set of tails. And so we're going to flip the board, uh, cut our next set, repeat for the other side, and then we get to cut our pins. Uh, so we're gonna be using a quarter inch end mill to cut our pin cuts. Uh, and I'll show you a little trick too about setting up the grid with this bit. Uh, so before we get into actually cutting the pins, um, like all good woodworking projects, I did a couple of test cuts. Uh, and the fit on my dovetails was a, it's a little bit loose. And so to fix that, uh, when I'm cutting my tails, I'm actually going to use an offset uh, and not go all the way uh, to exactly where the file says I should. So I'm gonna keep about a uh, five thousandths of an inch offset when I'm cutting my tails. And that way, the tail pieces will be just slightly bigger, should snug things up and make thing, everything nice and tight and gap free. So um, back at the workstation, I've got my piece clamped in place. I'm going to uh, switch to my pins workspace. Um, and then next we're going to create a grid. And just like before, new grid, uh, we've got a quarter inch router bit in there. We're gonna use a half inch spacing for our grid. Uh, and then because we have the cutting part of the router bit um, facing out, there's a potential you could mar your workpiece while you're doing this, but there's an easy way to fix that. So we'll plunge down. And then we've got our first point. Our second point. And then our third point on the corner here. And so I'm going to press and hold, move it away. Then it'll raise up. Don't mar your workpiece. So with my grid in place, I'm going to import my pins file. And we will set that right on the origin point. Perfect. And then the final thing, um, whenever you switch out your bit or your workpiece, you want to do your Z-touch again. Above the piece, do our Z-touch. So now, just like we did with the tails, when we're cutting, we're gonna do a pocketing cut, and we're actually gonna do this in multiple passes because uh, we can. Um, so I'm gonna cut about half an inch first, and then the full three quarters of an inch the second. So I'm only taking off a little bit on that second pass. All right. So we have our first pin board cut, and now you can see the shape of the pins. If we were to just flip this end over end, uh, our dovetail box would not go together. So uh, keep in mind, we've got our registration mark over here. We're actually going to rotate our board. So we still have our face is going to be against the workstation. I'll get that just. And now because our reference face with the X on it is on my right hand side, um, we'll need to set up a new grid just to account for any offset or changes in material thickness. Our two, then on this edge, our three. I'll remove the old cut file and I'll import the new one. Same pins cut file uh, and our anchor point is going to be on the right hand side and we will set that at our origin mark there. And then we just cut our pins like we did the first time. So now we've got uh, both sides cut. We've got our tailboards cut. Uh, so uh, we can move on to cutting a little bit of the interior casework joinery. We're gonna be cutting a couple of dados for a shelf. So the next step in creating our adventure chest is we're going to cut a dado in each of the sides to hold a shelf. Um, we're actually going to do that with the origin and it's all gonna happen directly on the machine, no computer involved. Uh, the station I've set up for cutting my dados is very similar to the workstation, um, except this is a larger piece, so it wouldn't fit on the workstation. 
um, but I just have a piece of uh, the same thickness material as my side that I've put my shaper tape on. I could also put more shaper tape on uh, this piece if I wanted to, but this gives me enough clearance to cut the dado I need to. Now, uh, with your new workspace set up in front of you, you also need to scan that workspace just like we did with the other one. Uh, I've gone ahead and done that already. I'm gonna create my grid and I'm actually going to do a new grid um, that's uh, set up to be in quarter inch increments instead of half inch increments. And then, cool. So now I've got my three touch points. We've got one, come all the way over here, two, then my third is going to be right inside this tail, got it in there. Press hold and away. I want my dado to be a half inch dado. I've got a quarter inch bit in the origin. And so we'll start it at 11 and a half inches and it'll go till 12 inches from our origin point. We hit create. I'm just making a rectangle. I'm gonna zoom in here. And I wanna be at 11 and a half inches, right there. Start our rectangle, go to 12 inches. And then we want our groove to be 10 and a quarter inches long. Going to do an inside cut, no offset. We've got a quarter inch bit. Have the rectangle I've got set up for my dado it actually extends off the edge of the board and that way I can plunge outside the board and have a nice clean entrance and exit so I've got a square dado on the back edge of my board. We're not going to go all the way through the front. It's actually going to be a stop dado. So there will be a little bit of rounding there. We'll need to clean up with a chisel. Not a huge deal. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, cut our shelf. Now our shelf is three quarters of an inch thick, but our dados are only half an inch uh, wide. So we need to rabbit out a small portion on each edge of the shelf uh, so everything fits together. Now the dimension of our shelf uh, is just a little bit over 21 and a half inches. And that's the width of our cabinet plus three eighths of an inch on each end to accommodate for the depth of the dado. Now the table saw, we've got our dado head in there. Uh, we've got a sacrificial fence. So some of the dado head is actually buried inside the fence. And then we also have a miter gauge. And so we'll run our shelf through like this, flip it around. Do it on the other side, and it should be a perfect fit. So next we're going to make our frame and panel back for the cabinet. Now frame and panel uh, is what it sounds like. You've got a frame of wood that holds a panel of another piece of wood. In this case, the panels are a quarter inch thickness and the frame is three quarters of an inch thickness. And so I've got my pieces cut to size here. Um, I cut the uh, pieces that are going to have our tenons uh, one inch longer than they need to be uh, because we're having half inch tenons on each side. Uh, and then the center piece as well uh, is an inch longer and that'll have half inch tenons on it. Uh, so I've got my center style clamped into the workstation, just like all the other joinery we've cut so far. Uh, it's against the registration pins, flush with the top. And we're gonna be making tenons on both ends of this piece. The piece is three inches wide. Um, our tenons are gonna be uh, roughly two inches wide. Uh, and so that's just like we did the dado. It's basically just drawing a rectangle and then routing away everything that isn't the tenon. We're going to be plunging half of an inch deep. That'll give us a half inch long tenon. Routing on the outside, 
I did uh, put a little bit of a radius on it. There you can see our nice quarter inch tenon. I'm just going to make a rectangle shape to cut off the ends, flip it over, and cut a bunch more tenons. So creating the mortise uh, is really just the inverse of creating the tenon, right? Because they made into each other. Um, on the workstation, uh, the pieces we need to create our mortises in are too long uh, to actually have the support brackets attached to the workstation. Not a huge deal. There's plenty of clamping surface here to clamp your piece in place, but we'll still use the support bar to make sure uh, everything's aligned up at the top. Clamp this down all into place. Move that out of the way. Next, you'll want to set up a grid for this workpiece. I've actually already gone ahead and done that because we've done it a bunch of times by now. And then um, you want to draw in your rectangle that you're going to remove. Now, uh, we've got a quarter inch tenon, so we need a quarter inch mortise. But we can't cut a quarter inch mortise with a quarter inch end mill with the origin because there's not enough clearance uh, to actually get that full quarter inch width. So I've inserted the eighth inch end mill, and then we're going to uh, make this uh, cut in three passes. The first pass is going to be a pocketing cut, then we'll do a second pocketing cut to get the full half inch depth. And then finally, we'll do an inside cut uh, to refine the shape. We've got our mortise there. I cut it a, just an eighth of an inch larger than my tenon, so I've got some wiggle room when we glue it up. Let's do a quick test fit. That's perfect. The last step in our frame and panel assembly is cutting a groove for our panel. And we're just doing that on our table saw. We've got a dado stack in there, sized to the thickness of our panel, about a quarter of an inch, and uh, just a hair deeper than a quarter of an inch. One key feature of our frame and panel joinery is I've uh, purposely made the tenon and the mortise deeper than the groove we cut for the panel. And that way, uh, when you go to assemble it, you don't have uh, any kind of gap here. It's a nice solid joint. Uh, and then the panel just sits in your groove. So I'll go ahead and get this door glued up and we can move on to the next step. Slides together. So we've got our case and panels all glued up. Which we'll take the clamps off here. Glue up actually went uh, pretty well. It was fairly uneventful. Um, I can see I've got a couple of small gaps in some of these dovetails, but nothing uh, a little a little glue and sawdust won't fix. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to rabbit the outside edge of our back panel. Uh, you can see here uh, we're doing about a three quarter inch wide uh, rabbit and cut our rabbit on all four sides of our back panel. It's going to be inset into the case just a little bit. That'll give it a ton of rigidity uh, and make putting the back on a little bit easier too. Now we get to one of the trickier parts of any cabinet build, and that is uh, installing your hinges on your doors. Um, the shape origin luckily makes this a pretty straightforward process. So I've got one of my doors here, I've got my other door clamped to the edge of my bench. Uh, and our hinge is really just a rectangle. So we can measure our hinge and it's an inch wide and two inches long and half of the hinge should be in the mortise on the door. So we'll make a mortise that's half an inch wide, two inches long. And then for our door, we're going to mortise about an eighth of an inch deep. Uh, so we're going to do an inside cut. And our, so our mortises are gonna be a half inch uh, wide, two inches long. Um, but the rectangle I'm going to lay out actually is gonna start off the edge of the board so we get a nice uh, clean cut in. 
All right. That is a nice fit. Wow. Perfect. So the finishing touch on these doors are these really cool uh, recessed brass pulls. Now they're flat on one side, but the back side you can see uh, we've, we've got some depth there, some different shapes. Luckily, it's really just three basic shapes. You've got a big rectangle, a little rectangle, and a circle, and that's very easy to program into the shape or origin. Now, in the origin, you can see I've really just made, we've got our big rectangle, we've got our little rectangle, and we've got our circle. And then when we cut these, um, it's just a series of inside cuts and pocketing cuts. You want to pay special attention to the depth of your router bit. So I'm going to go around the outside first at an eighth of an inch and then dive into the circle and the smaller rectangle. Then I just wanted to pause there so you can see the basic outline and shape. And then we just need to hog away that waist uh, at a half inch in the circle and small rectangle, eighth of an inch the rest of the way around. It's a little bit snug, but we'll just clean up a, a little of that uh, fuzziness and it'll fit right in there. Next, we're gonna add a couple of drawers to our adventure chest. And uh, really, it's very much just like building a box. We're actually going for a box inside our box. Uh, so I've got my top and bottom cut the size, and then I've gone ahead and made the sides of the box as well. So I'm going to have two drawers, a uh, taller one and a shorter one. Uh, and then the uh, dado in the center is for the uh, support webbing for the top drawer. Here we go, now we've got our drawer box that we'll put in our adventure chest. So the drawers we're making are gonna be pretty simple. Uh, it's basically just a box and we've got a locking rabbit joint at the front of the drawer. So when you pull on the drawer, you've got a nice solid me mechanical connection. Uh, the back, it's just a butt joint nailed in place in, in case we ever need to take the bottom out, the bottom breaks. Uh, and we cut uh, this joint on the table saw uh, with our dado stack, just a couple of setups. Keep in mind, you're gonna wanna have the groove facing up because if you have it facing the other way, your groove is on the outside of the drawer. Don't ask me how I figured that one out. And then we'll move our fence over to cut the dados in our sides. Uh, so now we've got our drawer pieces cut, we just need to assemble them. To expedite that, we're just going to use some glue and then hold it in place with some brads uh, while it dries. There we've got our drawer box made. And whew, slides right in on the first try. Perfect. So the last thing we're gonna need to do is uh, jazz up the face of these drawers a little bit. We don't wanna see that exposed joinery there. So I'm gonna put a little veneer on here and it'll be back in the cabinet. So uh, I've already gone ahead and attached the hinges. Uh, to my door in those mortises we made with the origin earlier. Uh, I didn't actually put in all of the screws because I still want a little bit of adjustability if I need it, um, especially um, with just regular uh, butt hinges like these. Um, they're likely not going to be perfect on the first try. All right. Say that's uh, that's pretty good. I'll probably need to shim the hinges out a little bit because the gap in the middle is maybe a tad too big. And then this door is a little bit sticky. I'll need to take some off the bottom there, but 
That one works. That one works pretty well. All right, I'll go grab those drawers. We'll get some drawer pulls on and uh, we're almost ready for an adventure. So now I'm just marking out the location for our uh, knobs for the drawers, basically equidistant from the ends and centered in the drawer face. Uh, I got an X here. I like to use an awl to give myself a really precise starting point for my drill bit. Got a finger pull on the bottom of it. Tighten that up. That's good. There we go. You can see I did uh, make the drawers shallower than the case here so the knobs wouldn't protrude and get in the way of the doors closing. Uh, but that about does it. I'll spend a little bit of time uh, cleaning up the outside of the chest, probably sand it, adjust the fit of the doors just a little bit more. And then I'm going to paint it, probably red or blue, something that could uh, be easily identified if it fell off a truck on my next adventure. I'd also like to take uh, another opportunity to thank our sponsor for this video, Shaper Tools. Uh, they were very generous. They sent us the Shaper Origin and the workstation. And as you can see, they're uh, pretty powerful tools. I was actually really surprised at how much I was able to do with just these two tools uh, in building this chest. Thanks for watching. I'm Andrew with Popular Woodworking, and we'll see you next time.